Hi, my name is Mike Ward. I'm the Global Director of Content at Informa Pharma Insights. Uh, I'm here at the Biotech Showcase meeting in San Francisco. It's a meeting that runs parallel with the JP Morgan meeting, which is sort of the classic place where the movers and the shakers, the, the great and the good of pharma, biotech and medtech sort of congregate at the beginning of each year. I'm joined by Greg Madison, who's the uh, President and CEO of Kerix. Uh, is it uh, Kerix or Kerix Pharmaceuticals? Kerix Biopharmaceuticals. Kerix Biopharmaceuticals. Now, now, Greg, you guys got an interesting story. Last year, you launched a, a, a product, uh, Orixia, uh, in the uh, uh, phosphatemia space. It didn't go as well as you'd hoped, um, and therefore you had to sort of, you know, think about sort of how you're going to turn that around. Do you mind sort of sharing with us you know, what happened and what lessons you learned from that? Sure, sure, and uh, thanks for the opportunity to be here today. And as you mentioned, we launched Orixia for the treatment of hyperphosphatemia in patients that are on dialysis in January of last year. Right. As you noted, the launch didn't go to the level we expected overall, so we had to step back and think about the marketplace and make some important adjustments throughout yeah. the course of the year, which we did. We kind of focused on three main areas overall. First and foremost, we needed to create uh, access through reimbursement. So working with the payers to ensure that when patients get prescribed the product, they actually have access to, the, to be able to do that. And so we achieved that goal in about August of last year where we finally got enough payer access to get uh, the majority of phosphate barnard patients you know, potentially on our drug. Uh, second thing we did was put samples into the marketplace. So samples are an important element from a physician perspective. We introduced those into the marketplace in the May timeframe overall. Okay. And then third, we really need to refine our kind of commercial strategy and our messaging strategy to really focus in on the percentage of patients that are on phosphate binders today but are not achieving adequate levels of phosphate control. Right. And so all those different elements were put in place throughout the course of the spring and the summertime I'm happy to report as we came out of the third quarter, moving into the fourth quarter, yeah. we're beginning to see these foundational elements and these uh, important aspects of our business start to move in the right direction overall. Uh, so we saw a very positive trend coming out of the third quarter. We continue to see good trends in the fourth quarter, and uh, that sets us up quite well as we enter in 2016. Uh, the other important piece that we put into place at the end of this year is we expanded our field force from 60 sales representatives to 95 sales representatives. We announced that at the end of the third quarter, we'd be doing that. We've completed that expansion in the fourth quarter, and so we'll have a full complement of representatives out there beginning in 2016. So, and, and, that, and that product, it's, it's going into, uh, because it's for, for dialysis, is that, is that, is that going to uh, uh, centers, uh, treatment centers, or is this to people's homes? Uh, more to the homes. It's more of a traditional uh, outpatient model, if you will. So uh, it's an oral medication, so the physician prescribes it for the patient, patient brings it to a retail pharmacy, and gets the product filled from there. Right. Okay, so, so when did the alarm bells actually start? start ringing I mean was it literally the first quarter sales and you thought wow this is way short of where you, you you'd anticipated yeah I think as we ended the first quarter and certainly moved into the second quarter we knew we needed to get uh, the reimbursement elements put into place and we felt like we were starting to make some progress there but certainly as we entered the kind of second quarter and certainly as we moved into the spring and summer months we certainly looked at the business and said all right we need to start making some of these adjustments and a lot of them are real time so samples for example we started to hear that from physicians in the April time frame we turned around and got samples out in May uh, right away so some things when you launch a new product, things come at you relatively quickly, so you need to make quick decisions, important adjustments, and move relatively quickly, and that's what we did over the course of the summertime. So I think the combination of all these different elements we put in place over the last several months, that's what we believe now is starting to really drive some good growth. We're not where we need to be just yet, but we're certainly moving in the right direction. And I understand that with Orixia, the idea is you actually will expand the indications that, that, that it can be used for. Correct. Yeah, so, so we have... Where are you on that? Yes, yeah, so we have an exciting uh, program. It's a phase three program right now. And the goal is to move from dialysis patients and treatment of hyperphosphatemia into the pre-dialysis marketplace. And the treatment would be for iron deficiency anemia. So this is one of the unique elements of our product. It's an iron-based phosphate binder that's absorbed, right? So it actually has the opportunity here to attack two complications of chronic kidney disease. So when you think about the pre-dialysis marketplace, it's a, it's a bigger marketplace than the dialysis side. Yeah. and the treatment would be for iron deficiency anemia. Now in layman's terms, iron deficiency anemia has a significant uh, effect on the patient's quality of life. 
they're tired, they're dizzy, lethargic, you get muscle fatigue, so it definitely weighs on a patient's quality of life. And believe it or not, today, there is no FDA-approved oral iron treatment for the treatment of iron deficiency anemia. So if we're successful, we'll be the first and only FDA approved uh, oral iron for treatment of this disease right now. Right, and so you said it's in, it's in phase three trials at the moment? Correct, yes. We've, so when do you expect that to, to, to read out? Yes, we've completed enrollment and it's a 234 patient trial and we expect the data readout uh, to be in the early part of second quarter this year. And so, pending successful data, we'll file with the agency in the third quarter of 2000 and two, third quarter of 2016, yeah. with expected timeline of approval in the mid part of 2017. Right. Okay. And the lessons you learnt from the initial rollout, these are totally applicable to, 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 to what you've got for the, for the, for the next... Yeah. Uh, yeah, it will be. Uh, and the nice thing is that the, the expansion indication will still be targeting the same nephrologists we call on today. Right. So today in the U.S. we target about 5,000 nephrologists. These nephrologists treat uh, chronic kidney disease patients both in the pre-dialysis and the dialysis marketplace. Right. So number one, if we continue to be successful as we move into 2016 and drive increased brand awareness, increased utilization of orexia in the dialysis side, it'll be the same physicians, those same nephrologists that we then start to call on for treatment of iron deficiency anemia in the pre-dialysis setting. So we'll have a bit of a head start, pair access will be in place, samples are now in place, so a lot of the elements again we put into place during this year will transition directly into the opportunity as we move into 2017. Right, okay, so so once you've got that particular franchise kind of nailed. Mm -hmm. what, what, what other things is, is Keras working yeah. on the moment? Yeah, no, we'd love to. Uh, our goal, our aspiration in the future is to build a company focused on treating patients with renal disease. Right. So the goal would be, you know, our foundational asset is Orixia, get the expanded indication as well, and then certainly look to add in other medications that can help, you know, affect the patient's lives with CKD. It's a devastating disease, not only for the patients, for their families. We think there's a real opportunity to build a company around this type of disease. Today. Right, okay. So apart from sort of communicating, you know, the sort of the, I guess the sort of the commercial turnaround that you're, you're, you're doing for this product, you know, at JP Morgan and uh, Biotech Showcase, there's lots and lots of opportunities for, for partnering meetings, etc. So, so w w what are you actually looking to get out of uh, you know, being in San Francisco at the moment? Yeah, I think importantly as we think about, uh, as we exit 2015 and think about our future opportunities, you know, the majority of the organization is focused where they should be, which is driving utilization for Rixia in the Dallas marketplace and really capitalizing on the elements we spoke about the expanded field force, the samples, uh, everything else being in place and reimbursement and driving utilization in 2016. We're also focused on completing that phase three trial, getting the data readout and getting that file with the agency. So that is probably the focus of the majority of the organization. Then we also have a small handful of folks who are starting to scan the landscape and identify if there's any opportunities out there uh, for assets or companies that might be of interest so that at the right and appropriate time, we can make those decisions and decide to move forward. And uh, how developed do those assets have to be? Yeah, for us, I mean, so we're not a research organization. It's more of a development and commercial type of organization. So those can range anywhere from, you know, phase two all the way to commercial type of assets and anywhere in between. Okay, and are you ge geographic agnostic? Uh, uh, so we are focused in the U.S. right now. That's where we have our commercial infrastructure. We outlicense the rights for uh, Ferric Citrate, which is a generic name. It's portrayed as Riona in Japan a couple of years ago to our partner, JT Tori. We also recently approved uh, approval for Ferric Citrate under the trade name Fexeric in Europe in September 2015. And our plan there is to partner with that asset overall. And those discussions are ongoing. Right. Okay. Well, great. Thanks very much for, for stopping by and, and telling us the story. Pleasure. Cheers. Thank you. Bye bye.